Hello and welcome back to my second video in a year. Um, holy crap! Someone call the, uh, um, the, the 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 YouTube police or whatever. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to be going over uh, how to edit this wedding photo. Uh, a number of months ago, one of my friends, John, was um, a groomsman at his uh, friend's wedding. And he ended up being the impromptu photographer because the other photographer didn't show up. John's a video person, not really a photo person, but he was smart. And he did put his camera on JPEG plus RAW. So he had the RAW images along with the JPEGs. That way, in case, you know, something came up, he had the RAW image to work from. Um, he sent me this photo. Uh, again, this was a number of months ago because he couldn't quite get it. Uh, the JPEG had blown out the dress, I think. I can't remember, but there was some problem with the JPEG, and he wasn't uh, as well versed in raw uh, editing workflows as uh, as myself, just because I have way more photography experience. So um, he told sent to me told me to have a whack at it. So um, anyway, we have this photo here, uh, and now I asked if I can make a video of it and stuff. So we have the photo here. I'm going to make a video of it. I, you know, months ago I sent him back the, the edited one. So I don't remember exactly what I did, and I don't have the sidecar file anymore, so I'm just going to wing it and see if I get close to what I got before. Um, so the first kind of problem with this image is the dress and some of some of the um, overexposure and underexposure up in here. Um, you know, wedding dresses are notorious for this. Uh, if you have... Uh, especially an outdoor wedding, you're going to end up with hot spots on the dress. It's almost unavoidable. John's done a very good job here of putting these two into uh, some open shade. Uh, they're even backlit a little bit, kind of, with the sun peeking through this, the trees. Not really. Um, but the first thing first, I'm going to kind of straighten this up a little bit. There's some distortion going on, but for some reason, uh, Lightroom will not correct for it on this camera. I, this is a, an Olympus Micro Four Thirds. I don't have a lot of experience with that camera, so I don't know if that is a um, particularity, particularity, particular thing with Darktable. Um, but it doesn't seem to have a profile for this camera. It is a um, Panasonic. Ooh, that's going to pop. Panasonic uh, GH5, I want to say. Yeah, GH5 with a 12 to 40. So it's a micro four thirds camera. So I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. But um, the distortion's not awful, awful. But I'm going to go with it. The other thing I like to do is switch my demosaic method to a maze. I, I find that does a little bit better job at handling um, some chromatic aberrations. Uh, but the first thing. Let's see if we can get that dress under control. So uh, if you go under base curve and you go under fusion, change that to three exposures or two exposures. Uh, two exposures might work for us. Um, what that does, it does a pseudo kind of exposure fusion tone map. Not really tone mapping, but it um, per pixel ISO fake array is the best way I can explain it. So it kind of adjusts um, the data per pixel. Um, and that, that brings us back in a little bit uh, on that. And the reason why I do this first is if you get this exposure bias down, down, low, uh, exposure shift up a little bit, and you see what it's doing? It's bringing these highlights in. So we'll bring that exposure shift up a little. Now, uh, because there's some... Um, uh, some detail in the in 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 his face here and in his beard that we don't want to lose. We want to bring that exposure up a little too, but that exposure shift setting will kind of protect those highlights to an extent. So I can run run the exposure up here, and it's just now starting to creep. And so I'm going to go and activate the shadows and highlights module to bring that back in. Maybe get the white point down there and see. We have saved all of this detail here in the dress. And we can see the hair and the beard. Um, we can see her face quite well, too. So it's looking pretty good so far. Um, another thing, raw images tend to not have a lot of contrast and saturation. Um, that's something that's done in the JPEG engine in the camera. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this warning here. Uh, so I, I usually bring in some of that after the fact. White balance. Um, 
John did a good job here. He was pretty smart. He put them in open shade. So, you know, we can give them a little bit of warmth here. It's their wedding day. We want them to look not so sickly. Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, so if you do, if you, if you do accidentally set your white balance too cool when you're shooting portraits, um, you get a little bit of, uh, I think it looks kind of like they, they, they haven't been eating well, you know, they're a little sick or something. So I usually go up a little bit, just, just, just to give them a little bit of a healthy glow. Uh, you can do it lighter skin tones. Don't take to this quite as well. So don't get too crazy with it. The darker people with darker skin tones, you can go kind of up on that slider and warm them up a little even more. And they don't look kind of weird with, with lighter skin tones, you get too warm and they start, people start to look kind of jaundiced and yellow. So just be, be aware of that. Um, let's, uh, the dab will do you a gobble, screw you on that one. Um, and here I'm going to hit the hot pixels, chromatic aberrations, um, fringe, and I'm going to take a look at lens correction. It says not found, please select manually. So Olympus, okay. So it apparently has it, but it doesn't look like it did much. Okay. Scale. Okay. Whatever. Um, I'm not really familiar with that camera. It may be just it doesn't have great corrections for that camera. Uh, tone curve. Uh, friends don't let friends have flat tone curves, so we're going to put a little bit of that, a little bit of an S shape into there to get a little bit of a pop in contrast in there. And and you can see we've got we've got the 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 pretty kind of filtered light through the 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 tree tree that's what that's called it's called a tree <laughs> so uh there but it's getting a little dark again so i'm going to cut on my exposure uh warnings and go up on the exposure a little bit well oh, too much too much too much come back down there we go all right and maybe maybe crank those shadows up just a little bit more so that those guys aren't so uh you know dark so in the dark there uh, the other thing I would do on an image like this, um, just to draw more attention to the two people in the center, this is one of those flavor to taste things, um, is to do a little bit of a vignette. Not a crazy one, just a little bit. Again, a dab will do you, a gob will screw you. So we, we'll just bring it on, we'll, we'll scale it down here a little bit. And fall off strength, brightness, and you know, you can see just a very subtle difference there. Maybe even bring it in a little bit more. That way, you know, it does, it's not so distracting. Um, so you're focusing on what you want to focus on. Um, not a, John, you did good on the picking the light and the location. Um, could have done a little better on the composition, if you ask me. But again, you know, it's, I understand. It was not, you were not there to do pictures. So totally get it. Uh, just point it for next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, it looks pretty good. He shot... Uh, a 640 ISO, so we may want to go in and do a uh, profile denoise. I like to do the wavelet setting, and there's a bunch of fancy new stuff here in Darktable 2.6 that I, I haven't really messed with yet. But if we just take the color noise out with the HSV color, that looks pretty, pretty good. Um, we'll duplicate the instance and take out some of the lightness. Um... That's too much, <laughs> way too much. The, uh, I, the, the the HSV lightness has got a very heavy hand, so I tend to bring that down quite a bit, um, just to keep it from getting out of control and looking all painterly. But take the opacity down, it's just enough to take the edge off the noise. Um, uh, still too much. These, uh, this is where a bigger sensor would come in handy, a bigger camera sensor. Yeah, yeah, that just takes just a hair of the noise out. Maybe even just take a little bit more of it out. Yeah. It's a little bit smoother. You lose a little sharpness, but no, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Now, uh, if we compare that to where we came in, that's what we started with. That's what we ended with. So not too bad. Uh, we, we have preserved the highlights. We still have good contrast. We have good lights under her dress, good lights in the skin tones here and stuff. Um, and we still have 
uh, good darks in the background. You can see the uh, sunlight filtering through the trees. It's got a nice kind of warm tone, but not too warm. Um, I would be very happy to present this image to clients. Uh, the only problem is this lens distortion. Again, I'm not sure if that's just... Uh, it, it works. The lens distortion module works with my cameras. I'm not sure. Maybe I just don't have the profiles installed for the Olympus because, again, I don't have one. So, um, But that gets you uh, kind of in the ballpark of, of a decent looking photo. Um, so again, uh, if you found this video helpful, let me know uh, if you want to see more like this, but uh, we'll call this the wedding photo rescue. Uh, again, just one more time. That's what we started with. That's what we went, that's what we got to. I might bring the contrast even down a little bit more. It's a little much. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Maybe even the tone curve, actually, after reviewing. It's the thing. I could sit here. I have to have like a 10 minute rule per photo or I will sit here and make endless adjustments because I'm like, it's not quite. All right, there we go. Just bring it in a little bit more. All right, now let's do a comparison. Oh yeah, that's better. So we're back. Um, yeah, oh yeah, that's way better. And it's not so so harsh on the skin tones there. Um, I'm happy with that. I hope you are. Again, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments. If you didn't, let me know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, uh, I will see you next time. We are back on Linux now. This is still still running um, uh, still running Fedora. I've, this is probably the longest I've stuck with a distribution lately. Still still running with Fedora Fedora 29 here. Um, so we're back on Linux with with Darktable. Um, but if you can. Uh, let me know if, what you want to see more of, and I will try to post more regularly. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. <music>